great big pass for me. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I'm your humble narrator. Welcome back to another bundle banter. We're with it with humble again. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not trying to sleep on fanatical or anything like that, but <laughs> humble just gets the views, you know what I'm saying? So I got to stick with them. Although, uh, this Summer Adventure Games bundle is not looking too hot, I gotta admit, all of these Telltale games shoved into it, that rhymes. <laughs> uh, without any delay, let's take a look at the tiers and what you can get. In the $1 tier, we've got Batman, The Enemy Within, the Telltale series. We've got The Walking Dead Season 1, The Walking Dead 400 Days, and Oxen Free. If you beat the average, you can get The Wolf Among Us, Batman the Enemies Within, Shadows Mode, whoa, The Walking Dead Michonne, and The Walking Dead Season 2. In the top tier for 15 doll hairs, we've got Heaven's Vault, Batman the Telltale Series, Batman the Telltale Series, Shadows Mode, whoa, <laughs> again, uh, The Walking Dead Final Season, and The Walking Dead A New Frontier. Obviously, there's a lot of Telltale games shoved into this bundle. I don't know why they just didn't call it the Telltale Games Bundle, because essentially it has their entire catalog, <laughs> plus Heaven's Vault and Oxen Free, which are not by Telltale. But these games are all fairly narrative heavy, and they do decently with their stories, all things considered. So we'll jump into these games individually, take a look, and see just exactly what makes them tick. Before we start, though, I do have a little something to say about Telltale. All right. So as is the case with most Telltale games, you've got a nice art style and an enjoyable story that only really gives you the illusion of being in control. That is to say, the choices that you make don't really change the story in any meaningful way. And I think that's the main reason that a lot of people are turned off by Telltale. Enough so that they ended up shutting their studios down for a little while. We all thought it was the end of an era, and I was saddened, but it also made way for game developers who want to produce these visual novel type games and actually give the player a bit more agency. Oxen Free is a good example of that. Essentially, that could be the review for every single Telltale game in this bundle. <laughs> but I'm not gonna do you like that. We'll, we'll jump in and actually take a look at them individually. Batman and the Joker have been DC Comics media darlings of the 2000s, and this game managed to demonstrate exactly why. But it's also a good reminder to not sleep on the Riddler. He's an amazing villain that doesn't get much play. Anyways, one of the greatest things about Batman overall is that he exists in this sort of moral gray area, which DC's golden boy Superman would never dare to touch upon. As with most Telltale games, this would have probably been much more enjoyable as just a visual novel. The game forces some difficult choices on the player, which can be agonizing until you start keeping in mind that the story is going to wrap up in roughly the same way no matter what decisions you make in the early part of the game. The late game choices are even harder and actually do serve to differentiate the endings a little bit, but is it worth playing through all of the not choices in order to make the one or two picks that actually matter and see a new ending? Eh, not to me. I will say that this Batman game is way better than the other Batman game in this bundle, but it still doesn't match up with my personal tastes exactly. Enemy Within the Shadows Mode DLC, I know this is in the middle and the top tier, but I'm just going to talk about it now. Get it out of the way. It is just a worthless piece of horse armor style DLC that does nothing but suck away some of the color in the original game. And I mean that in the most literal sense possible. Within the Shadows Mode sounds amazing, but it's essentially just a filter that makes the game look more dark and brooding or more bland, depending on your viewpoint. I thought the game's art style was nicely done, and this half-assed joke of a DLC takes a steaming shit all over that visual style. If you really wanted this as an option, why not give it away for free like a lot of other games do with HD textures? Those remakes take a lot more work than this... whatever the fuck this is supposed to be, this filter. Needless to say, I am not impressed. I won't be talking about this DLC again, as I said even though it is featured in this bundle twice. I hate it, times two. Case closed. Walking Dead Season 1. Ah, The Walking Dead. The game that put Telltale on the map for me, and a lot of other people. I really do enjoy these games, even if they do suffer from all the hallmarks of being a Telltale game. The story is well told, and tossing zombies into the mix can add a sense of panic to the quick time events like nothing else can. I've played through this story a couple of times, 
just to look back and watch how the characters develop. Would it be better as a visual novel? Eh, maybe. But the story packs enough juice that I couldn't just leave it to rot after one playthrough, so maybe not. If you're playing through the whole series, it can be a lot of fun to look back and remind yourself of how our favorite characters got their start. But even if you just play this game as a one-off, it's definitely a fun experience if you have any sort of love for Telltale's style of games. Walking Dead 400 Days! Bite-sized stories that take place within the Walking Dead universe? Is that a zombie pun? I guess so. <laughs> if you're gonna pick any of these Telltale Walking Dead titles as a standalone experience, this would be the one I would suggest, without a doubt. It's amazing how much character and character development can be packed into a 10-minute experience. The fact that you play through a segment with a character and basically never see them again leaves a lot to the imagination. Did those characters end up surviving or not? It's always fun to play out the rest of the story in your mind, and I found myself doing so quite often as I progressed through 400 days. There are definitely winners and losers when it comes to Telltale's prolific catalog of Walking Dead titles, as you can probably tell from the contents of this bundle, but Walking Dead 400 Days is top of the heap in my book. A plus, number one, best Walking Dead title. Don't at me. <laughs> Oxenfree. Oh, this isn't a Telltale game, but it does fall into the same genre, the kind of story-heavy, choices-matter title, and that means that it's a great opportunity to make some comparisons between Night School Studios and Telltale Games. Choices in this game really do feel like they matter a lot more than in the Walking Dead series. Bringing up the wrong thing at the wrong time can significantly change the disposition of characters towards each other. Once the game gives you a bit more free reign and you get your entire group of characters to fiddle around with, you can split them up and have them explore different areas for even more deliciously customizable interactions. The game is extremely slow, and you'll be doing a lot of walking. I'm not a big fan of atmospheric games that view themselves as a piece of art, but I was willing to put up with the sluggish pacing just for the sake of watching the characters interact some more. Like Telltale, the choices don't truly matter, but it feels much more like they do in Oxenfree than in any of the other Telltale releases here. Heading up into the middle tier, The Wolf Among Us one of the earlier Telltale titles, and you can tell they haven't really mastered their craft just yet. Very little room to explore, mind-numbing quick-time events, and not really any puzzly bits to speak of. I say without a doubt that you can get the same experience from reading a visual comic or even just watching a YouTube playthrough. The Wolf Among Us does offer a unique story with the signature lovely art style, but it's a type of game that feels more like a chore to play than anything else. Do you want to be a werewolf involved in a noir murder mystery? Absolutely. But not like this. Not like this. <laughs> I need something to sink my teeth into, aside from a series of quick time events and pointing and clicking my way through an admittedly decent story. There's no reason to play this one, when a no commentary YouTube walkthrough can give you basically the same experience, with much less headache involved. Walking Dead Michonne. Remember when I said Walking Dead 400 Days was top of the heap? I hope so. I, I just said it, literally, two games ago. Well, Walking Dead Michonne is so far underneath that bar that it has basically gone subterranean. Michonne has always been a favorite from the show. Give any character a katana and they're gonna gain some fans. I suppose it was only a natural progression to give her a game that showcases her backstory, but I really wish they had done better with it. Michonne is an interesting and complex character. Unfortunately, she is the only interesting and complex character contained in this experience. It feels like you're walking through a world full of cardboard cutouts. When someone ends up dying, I feel nothing at all. I'm just like, oh no, there goes... what's his face? You know Michonne isn't gonna die, so there's no thrill involved. Would it be better as a visual novel? Better? Yes but still pretty shit because of the one-dimensional characters. If you couldn't tell, I don't really like this one. Walking Dead Season 2 While I think Season 1 is objectively better overall, I'm really happy to continue the tale and see what becomes of our little Clementine. She gets her own sense of agency in this season, which is nice, but with that comes the constant reminder of how fast a little orphan girl needs to grow up in a world ravaged by the apocalypse. This presents its own set of cons, however, because I have yet to meet a writer who can create a believable script for a child. 
myself included. Clementine in Walking Dead Season 2 just isn't that strong of a character, and the supporting characters don't do much to make up for that fact. Season 1 was full of touching moments, but I can count the number of times I got that hopeful squishy feeling in Season 2 on just one hand. It's not a terrible game, but it does have a lot more shortcomings than the other entries in the series. Jumping up into the top tier, we've got Heaven's Vault. Interesting that this game made it into the top tier of this bundle. I have to admit that the world building is absolutely primo, but the whole gaming part of this video game is riddled with design decisions that don't make a lot of sense to me. The game will set you off on an exploration mission and then be like, hey, you only have two minutes to actually explore. Say what? Bitch, I thought we were archaeologists. Is this like the rare speedrun archaeology that nobody in their right mind would consider a good idea? Smashing thousand-year-old pots like we're in a fucking Zelda title, right? Pair that with the fact that manual saves don't exist. You only get one autosave slot. Not to mention talking is a quick time event that seems to come right out of left field, and this game ends up feeling like a complete disaster. There are a bunch of interesting ideas that I've never encountered before, but after a slight brush, I really hope to never encounter them again. Nice try, Heaven's Vault, but no cigar. Batman the Telltale series. Again, I don't know how this Telltale game takes the top tier over the enemy within. It was released earlier and is objectively worse than the follow-up. There are a lot of creative liberties taken with some of the most beloved characters in the Batman universe. I appreciate the attempt to make an original story, but... Perhaps they should have stuck closer to the actual characters of some of the most established faces that we've come to know inside and out. Do you think Alfred would ever actually walk out on Batman? Because I don't. It's little things like this that take me right out of the story. And considering the story is really the only reason to play this title, I gotta say that it probably isn't really worth playing. Oh, but don't forget the crappy DLC they tossed in to sweeten the deal. I know I said I wouldn't mention it again, but do not let it sway you. This Telltale game isn't as bad as The Wolf Among Us, but it will definitely disappoint Batman newcomers and veterans alike. Walking Dead, A New Frontier. This third entry of the Walking Dead series makes some improvements when compared to Season 2, but it still fails to capture the magic of the first season, which isn't really a fair comparison. I mean, nothing stacks up to that first season. Despite its shortcomings, however, a New Frontier does manage to demonstrate just why The Walking Dead was such a major cornerstone for Telltale. The story starts out pretty engaging right out of the gate, and my attention wasn't really broken at any point. Clementine is slowly coming into her own, and it's a lot easier to write for a teenager than it is to write for an actual child. The story moves along at a nice clip, and the choices feel significant even though I'm constantly aware that the decisions don't really matter in the grand scheme of things. Or do they? <laughs> the main reason to play through A New Frontier is to follow Clem's story, but at least in this title the secondary characters aren't as weak as they are in some of the previous iterations of the Walking Dead series. Walking Dead The Final Season Our little girl is finally all grown up. I've got a lot of feels about Walking Dead The Final Season, and basically they're all good. You can import save files from previous games to have your choices carry over across games, which is just fucking amazing. That's why I said in the New Frontier, do the choices matter? Kind of, a little bit. It doesn't lead to anything being all that much different, but pet names following characters around is just a really, really nice touch. I like it a lot. The fact that this game series has let you watch a character grow and blossom is an amazing feeling overall. While this game is still not as good as Season 1, the final season definitely offers more aww, heartwarming moments than the second season. A lot of those moments are owed to the fact that Clementine is now trying to get her romance on. I guess even the zombie apocalypse can't stop human hormones from running rampant. Overall, the final season doesn't really stack up to New Frontier, 400 Days, or Season 1. But it's still a lot of fun. So what do I think of this bundle? Um, if you like Telltale games, you're probably going to be in hog heaven. <laughs> but admittedly, most of us probably have these games already, don't we? They've been bundled so many times before. Oxenfree is really the only other game that's kind of worth getting, but Epic gave that game away for free not too long ago, so you probably already have it in your Epic library. I don't know, overall this bundle's going to be a great big pass for me, 
I found it super hard to actually motivate myself to sit down and play some of these games. <laughs> I don't know if I'm just in a mood lately, not really into making content recently, but it was difficult and I took my sweet time getting it out, which I do apologize for, but needs must, you know? We all got a life to live. <laughs> So yeah, if you don't have uh, Oxen Free, then probably go for the first tier. I've got basically everything in this bundle except for Heaven's Vault, and I do not want Heaven's Vault. <laughs> that game was a miserable experience. Some people out there seem to like it and bless their hearts. <laughs> but to me, it felt really confused and experimental, but not in a good way. You know what I mean? So maybe buy the $1 tier, if only for Oxen Free. Everything else, eh, kind of meh. A lot of meh across the board, but I'm not really the biggest fan of Telltale games. I'd much rather watch them on YouTube than sit down and play them myself in most cases. And I'm not going to spoil anything from Season 1 if you haven't played it yet, but there is a big reason that nothing can surpass that game. They started strong, they just kind of ended okay. So yeah, easy pass for me if you guys like Telltale. Let me know in the comments if you decided to pick it up what tier you went with. It might be like some good bundle fodder for the key horde, but honestly, I think most people probably have these Telltale games already, so I'm, I'm going to pass on it even for that. <laughs> but anyways, friends, I hope you like, comment, and or subscribe. If you did enjoy the video, check out the links in the description to Twitter, Discord, Patreon, and a big, big shout out to my beautiful patrons. Oh my god, we picked up two more patrons. Jess and Lol, appreciate that. Austin Lubitkin, welcome to the fam. And we also got some of the OGs, Robert Waits, Dot Nathan, Crimson Albedo, Lady Nix, Radim, Cisco, Damon Darkstar, and the OGest of all, you know him, Nico the Legend. But as always, friends, thanks for listening along with me. Thanks for your patience as I uh, finally got the motivation to put this one out. I'm sure we'll visit Fanatical quite soon. I just need to get my rear in gear. But anyways, <laughs> this has been another Bundle Banter. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. Thank you for listening along with me. I shall see you in the next one, and until then, friends, bye-bye.